Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we'll be painting a very similar heart to this. Um, we're going to be using some more muted tones today. This is the inspiration, um, an example of something that I do in my live classes, and today's painting will have more grays and uh, mustard gold and creams and whites. So I do have a sample visual nearby when we go to start painting, but I did want to give you this inspiration inspirational um, painting here as a start to captivate you and let you know how beautiful it can be. We do have this one already posted on our YouTube channel for a different look if you want more of the brights and then if you prefer more of the neutral tones and we're going to be doing that today. All right so I'm going to go ahead and switch camera views. We're going to go ahead and start to work on our other view here. So let's see. I want to make sure I get the right camera. All right. All right, so here we go. I'm going with my time lapse. Let's see. All right, so this gives you an example of our traceable that we have that goes with every paint kit that we sell. And I have worked ahead a little bit here. I'm gonna bring this closer to you. And then let's talk about how to do this first. So in your painting kit, when you go to open it up, you're going to have this with your supplies. And then you'll also have your paints. And in that little bag, you're gonna find this pencil here. And then we have our traceable and our little visual here. So you can kind of get an idea of those more muted tones. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that transfer paper, we're going to tape it up at the top, and we only secure up at the top. We want to make sure that this is free and clear so that we can lift this up and constantly check our work. And then I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch hats here because I've got my big cowgirl hat on. I don't want it to jet out over the image here. All right. So then you have your traceable and then it is basically just centered in the middle here and just tape tape and then you're good. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and basically wherever you see a line, we're just gonna basically just draw right over the top. And then that will give us our foundation for getting started here. So just draw right over the top, just follow those lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up. Now there's one other step that you can do. It is optional. And again, I worked ahead a little bit here. So I've got, for the sake of time with the tutorial, and whenever you're done with this, you can just throw this in the trash. So I do want to make sure that this main shape here of the heart, that iconic shape stays intact. So your kit comes with a permanent marker. I did go ahead and do that hard black line over that one main shape. The rest of the images are, are very soft and muted. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let uh, this be with this as I wanna make sure and show you this so you could let that be soft. Um, so that you can see this better in the camera light, and I'm going to do a whitewash of paint over this. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of this hard Sharpie line over the top. So, and let me talk about why you may or may not want to do this. So some of you uh, may feel really confident in just doing the paint work to create the flower shapes over the top here. If you are feeling very timid, and like you do not want to take any risk at all of losing the flower shapes, then you might want to go ahead and follow along and go ahead and do this hard line ink on these shapes. Because what this will do is it will bleed through that paint, which will obviously create a much softer rendition of this as that wash of paint comes on over the top and you'll always have that here too as a reference to see it underneath. So that kind of gives you an idea. 
And again, if you're a little bit more confident, I'm gonna teach you a brush stroke, which really just allows you to create the textural flowers over the top. So if you feel like, you know what, I really feel like I can do that and I don't wanna contend with hard black lines, um, then you can go ahead and make that decision too, if you would like. And I would say if you're like, wow, now I'm really confused, tipsy. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just a beginner. Just help me make the right decision. Go ahead and follow along then and just go ahead and do the hard black lines. Because I can assure you that we're going to get really good coverage over them. And this is like better safe than sorry. And this way you will absolutely not lose the shape of these flowers. They will. These lines will bleed through a bit, but still be soft and easy to work with. And so there's your answer on that. I don't know if I didn't confuse you too much, but again, if you are still wondering, just go ahead and follow along and do this part. So this is the this would be the better safe than sorry for the beginner who's really feeling uh, not as confident and not wanting to risk at all losing the shape of uh, that trace of flowers in the beginning. All right, so we have a great start. Now you can also see the images very clearly in the camera, because I know that bright film light kind of tends to wash out detail. So that's also going to help a lot to be able to see to begin with. All right, so now we've got a great start here. The only thing your kit does not provide is the water. So you do want to make sure you've got some water nearby in your bucket. You've got your napkins nearby. We've got our brushes. I've got some extras here, but your kit will come with what I call a mama brush and then a little buddy brush, a little flat top, and then a little bit brush. Okay, and then we've got some little paint plates. And I've got a little bit of a head start here with some white and some black. And let's go ahead and open up this paint kit. So again, this is titanium white. And this particular paint kit is called Lamp Black. I know sometimes it's called Mars Black. I use a couple of different styles of paint or brands of paint, but in this one today, titanium white, lamp black. So that's gonna be our start here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this. This is going to be our yellow ochre. I'll do like a little nickel sized dollop of that. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pencil since we're done with that for right now. And with a new mama brush, it might be a little bit stiff. So we're gonna go ahead and place it into the water and then we'll just dry off a little bit here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nice little dollop of that titanium white. And then we're gonna do like a little tiny touch of the black because we're gonna make a nice light gray. So we'll have that nearby. So I've got some titanium white in a pure state here nearby. We've got our light gray nearby. And we also have a little touch of that yellow ochre nearby too. So we've got a great start. We can also mix up little darker sections of like darker charcoal gray too, which is also really pretty. All right. So down here at the base, we're going to go ahead and do a little line around the edge of the heart using more of that line edge of the brush. And then we're gonna do a vertical pull down from there, where we're gonna allow that flat side of the brush to pull down over the surface area. And you can see it's getting a little bit of that dry brush look which is really beautiful if it's the top layer, but now we're wanting good coverage, so we need to really make sure and saturate the canvas. So you can add a little bit of water to it, and that'll actually help that paint really flow into the canvas. Um, also, a little bit more paint also really helps too. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that light gray. So I'm gonna start initially with that line around the edge, and then we're gonna do a nice little soft pull vertically down 
I'm gonna grab a little bit more water. See as I'm working it over the top of that flower, see how it's bleeding through. So it will definitely be subdued, but still visible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take some vertical pulls up from the base here, just pull up and again, keep those strokes going in vertical pulls up and down. And a little bit more of that black, that dark charcoal gray, pull that through in this section, it's a little bit darker. A little bit more of that charcoal gray here. We're gonna do the edge work here on the edge of the heart. Let's grab a little bit of water to make that paint a bit more fluid so it flows into the pores of the canvas. And take that around the edge. And the black, dark charcoal. A little bit of white in there too for that light gray. All around that part. Now I'll just start to do those vertical pulls here. Grab a little bit of water. You have to go ahead and pull through the canvas. Grab a little bit of that light gray as well. Nice vertical pulls. A little bit more white here. Move some vertical pulls this way. And then also down. And we're getting some, like, as the vertical line tries to connect into this line that's curving this way, I'm going to have to work back and forth just a little bit to kind of softly fade that. So I'm going to fade this back into here and then make a real gentle light touch to pull down into that vertical pull here. So it softly blends that in. Nice transition. Do a little bit more black in here. A little bit more of that black down. So again, this is just pure black that I'm placing on here and just pulling this into that gray. I'm getting nice vertical pulls of that into that color. Grab a little bit more of that white in there, soften that gray up, work that up and down. And as you're pulling, you wanna get your, hold that brush more parallel to the canvas this will give you a lighter hand, allows more of that paint to really rest on the surface. So that white and black, that light gray. Let's grab a little bit of water, work that in, bring that back and forth. Do a soft blend around this edge. It's a little bit of a curve there. And then we'll start to do that vertical pull out to the side and then down.
Now there's a tiny little hint of some of this. We're going to use some of this cobalt blue here. And a little tiny hint of that happening. It's quite lovely. So we'll do a little touch of that. Do nice vertical pulls into that light gray. Blends really nicely. Get a little bit of white, that, that light gray. Grab a little bit of water too. Make that paint a bit more fluid. Light pulls here, grab some of that cobalt blue, pull that into that color. And again, hold the brush parallel to the canvas and that'll give you that more light, gentle hand, allows more of that paint to really rest on the surface area. A soft blend in here a little bit, and then can turn that brush handle a little bit to the side. Soft vertical pulls in here. You can even do some just pure white. Light little strokes of that. Your white in here too is really lovely. Just kind of pull that down. Put a bolder highlight through those vertical strokes. Grab a little bit of water as needed. Some of that black, some of that white. Nice vertical folds in here. A little bit of that cobalt blue as we go. It's very pretty. Also, like a teeny little hint of very subtle. You can also add a touch of viridian in here, too. So we'll start to add that in. A little tiny pea size amount of that. That's coming up pretty quick. Move this over. Light gray. Have some more white. Need some bigger, just pure white highlights, pure white vertical pulls. Now I mentioned that meridian, we're gonna do a little tiny touch of that. See, it's gonna softly blend in there, become a bit muted with that gray in there. And it is a little bit more dramatic. So, you know, if you kind of decide, you know, you may or may not be a fan of that, you can keep it more neutral if you want to. So I've got a little pulls in here. You grab a little bit of white if you want to keep it a bit more muted. And as I'm pulling, I guess I'm also remembering too to keep that hand parallel to the canvas more. And remember that allows that brush to allow the flat side of the brush to face the canvas. Light hand gives kind of a nice texture, light drag over the top. Now we've got our gold ochre over here. Let's grab a little touch of this burnt sienna. I feel that warmth happening in the base a little bit. Start with that yellow ochre and just do some like gentle pulls in here. Pretty. 
It'll softly blend in with that white, some of those other colors. A few pulls here from the base. And again, hand parallel to the canvas. And on this side. And we've got the warmer tones of that burnt sienna. So we're going to grab a little bit of that and through here. And then it touches of that. Very cool. And then we in here. Do a few more. Maybe two. All right, so you can keep it kind of vibrant or if you want it to be, again, more muted, step back into it with more of that gray. You know, you can sweep in more gray over the top to, to keep it a little bit more muted. So that's up to you. See, that definitely created a more subtle muted look. Darker charcoal gray, which is that black and white, start to work that in from this side. So, see a little flower peeking through here. Roll that down. Long bit of pulls there. All right, and every time we do this, it always changes a little bit. So again, if you want more of that washed out white look, again, come back in with more of just the light gray and just do long vertical pulls over all this color to keep that a little bit more subtle and not as vibrant. And then there's more, we've got a palette knife with this kit too. We can work in a bit more of that over the top when we get towards those finishing touches. All right, so this is gonna be our first step with just the brush stroke. Now over the top here in the center, we're going to be working in nice lovely cream color. So I rinsed out my mama brush and I pick up a dollop of the white and then a little touch of that yellow ochre. We're gonna make this really pretty light cream. And we're gonna place this over the top of the head here. And remember how I told you that it would still, we're gonna see those black lines, but they're definitely visible to us so that the flower shapes stay intact but much more muted with this wash and cream over the top. We have our white and yellow ochre. We're not gonna place this over the top of the heart. In the brush, like you'd hold a pencil. especially as we do that curve around the edge, that will help give you more precision as we curve around that shape. Very friendly fly in the studio, probably more than one. It's a sunny day here. It's cold, but it's sunny. I'm gonna come in. I'm right by the doggy door. I'm gonna come in. Okay. So that is looking quite 
beautiful. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse out here. Dry off. Now, really important, we're working with acrylic paint today. It does set up and dry really quickly. So if you do not have a chance to rinse out your brush, you don't want to just leave them off to the side with paint on them. You always, if you don't have time to get to it, make sure you at least leave them in the water. That'll keep, keep them from getting hardened up and like sticks. Your brushes will turn into sticks if you let it harden with paint on them. So either clean them off immediately, which is the most desirable decision, or at least let them rest into the water, but don't just leave them out with paint on them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and this is our little buddy brush next. We're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of water in here. And I'm gonna to start to use, I'm gonna show you a technique with little bit and then also with little buddy which is pure white paint and starting to make those little flowers in here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take just a little push into that. And we're just going to do a little pull here from the top of the petal and then in. And take this all the way around. So that flat part of the brush kind of makes a little squared off petal there. And then you just pull into the center. You pull this a little bit closer so you can see how that looks. Has some nice texture to it. Now you can also use, you can also use uh, your little bit, you know, a little bit of water and then dry off. You can kind of twist out to a nice fine point. Get a nice little of paint there on the edge. And another way you can freehand some of these is you can just do a little push and then let that be tiny little flowers going diagonals all the way around in a circular pattern. And then bring that closer. So it doesn't look like a lot in the beginning, but when you do that little pop of that golden ochre right in the center, then all of a sudden, it really looks like a flower then at that point. So you make that little circle of gold right in the center of the flower. So you can make some more delicate flowers with the smaller little bit brush, or you can make the bigger flowers with your little buddy. Go ahead. Grab another little layer of the white. I'm making some of these bigger flowers here to begin with. Let me show you on the darker color here to really help it have more of a pop. You can see it. So I'll take this all the way around so I get a nice little layer of paint there. I'm gonna turn the brush parallel to the canvas and I'm going to start on the outer part of the petal, and I'm just going to pull in with a gentle pull into the center. Okay. And then we take our little bit brush, we pick up a little bit of that yellow ochre, like a little ball on the end of the brush, and just do a little touch right in the center for that cute little stylized flower. You can feel how these flowers are very easy to do in a free-handed way. Like if you just didn't even have the trace, you could do some of these. And then I would encourage you to, if you want to add more flowers, you don't necessarily have to even rely on the trace initially. You can certainly just start to be creative and add more flowers in different places if you'd like. Or you can leave it just in the exact design that it is. But really important as you're placing these down again, you can see I'm holding that handle as you know parallel to the canvas. That gives you that light hand. It allows a lot more of that paint to really rest onto the surface. If you hold it, if you hold the brush like this, it's going to scrape into the paint and scrape it off as you're making that move. So really important to hold that handle out to the side. 
parallel, and that's going to give you that really nice, light, gentle hand. It allows a lot more of that fun texture to just rest on the surface area. So pretty. This is just titanium white at this point, really bright light. And every time I'm reloading a brush to make sure I have a nice thick little ball of paint on the end, that will create that nice texture. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit more paint here. And this is the titanium white. Get a little nice, beautiful coverage here. Little touches and pulls into the center. And then you can be playful with this too and just do like little tiny touches around. And that's something I really couldn't put into the traceable because it's just like little touches of it. So you just kind of be a little playful with it and just kind of just barely work around here, putting up those little touches of texture. But here and there. I'm just kind of gently going all the way around that shape. I'm going to go back here. All right, and then let's take our little bit brush and we'll gather a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Do a little pea size amount of that again. Pick up a little ball of that. And then we're just going to do those little pushes of those little balls of yellow ochre in the center of each one of our little flowers. And then that really helps make these little shapes pop as flowers. And you can do a little bit of a, you know, parentheses to one side, parentheses to the other side. That gives a little soft circle right in the middle there. And that was really quick. A few more here. A 
little pin to flowers and coming around that shape. Now I'm going to start to add just a little bit of fun texture around the edge. So I've got my yellow ochre and a little bit of that white. And I'm just going to do a light, soft sketch. A little bit of water. I just want this to be a bit more translucent. A little bit brush. Just a light little sketch of this. Light sketch right around the edge. Hold a brush like you'd hold a pencil. And again, just light sketch. It just echoes the same shape of the heart. Just kind of comes around on the edge here. Light little sketch. Kind of rough on those. Yeah. And then you can add different touches of color in the middle of the heart. You can keep it more light and bright if you want. Or let me show you what I mean here. Let's do a little bit of our titanium white and our viridian and our yellow ochre. Add a little bit of water. I need a little bit more of that titanium white because I want this to be very muted. A hint of color. It's a very light, light, light sage green. Um, so if you want, you can just do like little tiny touches. I've got a little bit brush now, do little tiny touches of almost like a reference to a leaf coming outside of those flowers. It's very subtle. So I do a push and then I do a, a pull and then lift off with a light hand. And that stroke makes that shape of that leaf. So again, this is my light sage. This was viridian, yellow ochre, and a lot of white there. Yep. Press and then lift off with a light hand. We'll take that in some different diagonal directions outside of the flower. A little bit more of that gray to it. A bit of water, a little water, a little floral in there. And then again, we're going to do a little bit of that rough sketch on the inside of the heart, just around the inside. It's a little bit of that texture, it's a little line of, of sketch on the inside. It's a little bit fun and messy. Really pretty there. Okay, so some different textures that you can start to add in here. We've got some paint drips, we've got some palette work. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out. And let's go ahead and take our palette knife. And we're gonna mix up a little bit more of this Titanium white here. Yeah, I'm just going ahead and actually going into a little bit of that gray with that hint of that sage green. And so you can do some pulls. So I get that paint on the flat side, I press firmly and then just kind of drag it across. You know, that creates some really nice texture over the top. You can also go darker if you want to. So you can make this a lot darker here with that darker charcoal gray. And you can have that darker texture there over the top too.
but just gently glides over the top of that color and creates that nice texture over the top. I'm going to bring this closer so you see what that texture starts to look like. And a brush just really can't do that, not like a palette knife can. Pull this on the top and just pull it down. Light drags for that texture. Get a better vantage point from here. Some of that sage green, that yellow ochre. Put on some of that color with that palette knife too to give you an idea of what that would look like. A bit more right over here, push that in. So again, you go darker, lighter, you don't want gray, more muted. It's just up to you. Be playful with it. I do tend to use a lot more of the titanium white in the mix, though, just to keep it softer and lighter here. It's maybe more of a personal preference, but. And then you can even start to play with little areas of texture in the center of the heart too. Be a little bit more careful with that, but you can take like a little tip of your palette knife here too, and just do like little tiny touches of that texture in the center here. Get some more titanium white. Do a little touch. So I'll do little tiny touches. This is another way you could make a more textural flower here too. Take that all the way around. And you can also just add more texture to your flowers with this too. I mean, it's a little bit more of that texture that lays on right over the top. But just have a real gentle hand. So you'll pick up again. Let me show you again here real quick. Do a little dollop of white. Take your palette knife, kind of pick up a little tiny amount of white on the tip. And then just kind of barely lay that on over the top and just do a light pull with it. And that can also just leave little sections of more of that texture that you can work in over the top. So drag here and around the edge with it.
We're getting a nice little texture around the edges. I'm going to take some more of this burnt sienna here. And I've got a lot of this white still left over, so I'm going to kind of work that in. Do some light palette knife work with that. You can see how it's making that nice texture. And again, if you love more neutral, more light, more bright, then the answer there is more white. So I'm going to come back in with some pure white and show you what I mean by that. So I've got that pure white, more of that. And so you can start to work that in over the top. So I'm going to just bring this a little bit closer to you so you can see that beautiful texture that it starts to create. a little bit more yellow ochre in the back of a creamy look. Taking a little bit of this lemon yellow in there too to give you a pretty little hint of that. A little bit more of just the pure white. We also have another plate that comes with the kit. So if you feel like you're having a hard time getting into some of that pure color, which I definitely was on that plate, then I'm going to come back into this pure white here. And then I'm just going to start to work this in over the top. You can see how it gets to be very thick and quite lovely. Get a little bit more. Black in here. Do a really pretty light gray again. So again, just trying to really show you how lots of layers can be achieved with lots of vibrant color, or you can take it right back down to being more more muted too. So lots of fun options here. And you can cut in around that shape by taking more of the smaller section of the palette knife and working in around that shape there. You can even kind of go back and forth this way too if you want like a different variation of the texture. Take it in a horizontal stroke and you can get some different feelings that way too with the paint. That's a little bit of horizontal action back and forth there.
And then let's do some water runs really quick here too. So those are fun in here and there's a lot of that nuance happening. So I'm gonna take my mama brush and I'm just gonna gather some water here, pick them out and just do a little press like into that white and let that drip down the canvas. And you have to angle your board a little bit so that it does allow that run to drip down. I'll take this all the way around. I'll even start some of those drips right up here at the top and let it run all the way down. And you know you don't have to do it in the center. You can if you want to, if you don't mind that drip going down the center, which in this case, I don't mind. It's pretty textural, it can handle it. So let that, those drips just start from the top. And it creates a nice little bit of continuity throughout the painting too. And I got a little bit of a press with that. So I'm gonna scrape that back out to where it doesn't show the bristle marks as much. I'm just lots of water drips there. It creates some really nice texture. And then the other thing I like to do at the very end is I can accentuate some of those flowers again, like out here. So I'll come back in with a little bit more of my titanium white here. Little buddy, and just get nice little flower that kind of pops out over the top of the texture again. So sometimes those water runs can maybe subdue some things that you didn't want subdued. So we can come back in over the top. And then I'm gonna come back in with our little bit brush and come back in with a little bit more of that yellow ochre. And just do a little touch of that circle. And I would let that have some time to set up and dry too. So you don't want to continue doing the water and the drips for a little while. Let these flower centers continue to kind of set up a little bit and they're a little more accentuated rounded shapes there in the middle. Oh, the only other thing that we could still continue to add just a little bit as a possibility, there's a tremendous amount of texture happening here. Uh, but if you did want a bit more of that sage green happening in there, that would be our meridian, our yellow ochre. And then we're going to grab some more of our white. I did want to show you that mix one more time. Little pulls of that still in there.
light poles is creating even more texture at the top. And then I'm just going to do a few more subtle hints of some blue in here. So I'm going to take the cobalt blue. A little touch of the lamp black in here. We always want to recap our paint. So I dropped it. So in order to keep your paint in a position where it really lasts, you always want to recap it. Hold up, Lou. A little bit of that white and that gray. Any tiny touch of black too will kind of bring it to a slight a little bit of water. There's just that sketchy again, it's kind of doing a sketch as about the cobalt blue. So I like to sketch around on the edge. Holding the brush like a pencil, just kind of working back and forth on a light, sketchy stroke here. And you can do more of those water runs too off, off the edge of that. Water and then press. So it allows that color to roll with it. And then we're going to come in with a little bit more of the white all over the top here. Right here. And take our palette knife and we can just do little touches of white. Punctuate around the edges.
Again, really playful. More texture. And sometimes it's hard to know when to quit, but you can keep building layers and layers of texture here. I'm also going to come back in with my little bit brush here and show you how to work in just a little bit more of the white texture over the top. So a little bit and that white, and you can continue to just do it another layer of the white over the top of the heart. And I fill that in with more white highlights. Don't forget about that side sweep too. It helps soften things up a little bit and create a little bit of a different texture by then. All right, so again, you can continue to play and add textures and paint drips, but we've got a lot of different layers that we've created here. I'm going to do one more sweep here with my yellow ochre around the edge. And we'll probably just call it quits for this lesson. And this is a little bit and my yellow ochre and a little bit of a light sketch around the edge here.
the playful little lights of it. Get more of the And then you can always sign your masterpiece. Now, I think it's easier to do this with your permanent marker, which does come with your kits. However, you must do this on a completely dry canvas, so you'll have to wait on that. If you do want to do it with the brush, let's go ahead and use our little bit brush. I'm just going to show you like with an initial here. So I do, the brush The brush is nice and wet. I do a little twirl here into the black, any contrasting color that shows up over the surface here, a little twist. And then we'll just go ahead and do a quick little initial, just like that. All right, so we are done with for today, but again, you can continue playing. And again, all the supplies that you need for this project are on our website at tipsyartist.com. Much love to y'all today. Thank you for paying with us. Toodles.